All right, let's go ahead and we're going to talk about Sherlock. So Sherlock is pretty neat. It is an open source intelligence tool that allows you to very quickly hunt down social media accounts by username across social networks. So I'm going to show you how to install it. We're going to talk about it a little bit, and then I'm going to show you some demos of how Sherlock works so that you could potentially uh, integrate this tool into your workflow. Now, Sherlock is interesting because it is designed around taking a username that you already have and then extrapolating that out to many different accounts to see if that username exists in those locations. Now, first and foremost, the most important piece of this is just because a username exists someplace doesn't mean that that username is owned or in use by your target, okay? And the reason why I have to say this, and I'm going to show you an example of that. One of the individuals that we're going to do some searching of, uh, he has active social media, but he also has fake social media that is made by people who are fans and then other people who use his information, stuff like that, right? So there are going to be accounts that don't necessarily match up. And you need to keep that in mind whenever you're doing research on a target. Because if you're going to be doing open source intelligence, just keep in mind, just because it's on the internet doesn't mean that it's true. So uh, with that said, very first item, I have already get cloned a copy of Sherlock. You can see that uh, here. And this uh, this repository is actually really nice. Um, they do have a method for you to install Sherlock by Docker, uh, or you can install it locally. I did not attempt to do a Docker install. Usually I will do Docker. Um, I just don't have a reason for doing it. I like Sherlock, I think it's pretty good. And I installed it locally. Now, within the instructions, uh, over here on the right hand side, you'll see we have the GitHub project for Sherlock. If you take a look here at the installation of the requirements right down here, uh, I would always recommend that you use dash dash user uh, as part of your installation. Don't install it globally. Uh, it's simply it's not necessary. But of course, you can also use your Docker file. So the very first thing that we're going to look at is let's take a look at the requirements. Beautiful Soup and BS4. Uh, these two items right here, uh, those are going to be for dealing with web pages, uh, particularly probably searching for or otherwise identifying whether an account exists, um, maybe a who, a who test. Essentially, you go in, uh, you load up a web page, maybe uh, let's just pretend github.com forward slash retro 64 XYZ. Uh, if it doesn't load, the web page is going to come back and say this project has not been found. Uh, but if it does load, it'll say something completely different. Uh, so you can actually run a test and just say, hey, if it says this has not been found, uh, then that's fine. We'll just come back and say, hey, it's not been found. But if it comes back as anything different than that, then we can go ahead and just assume that there is uh, a username in use on that account at this location. Um, certify, I don't have no idea what that's for. Uh, I could probably look it up, but uh, Colorama, that's for coloring your terminal. Uh, PySox creates uh, sockets. Uh, request, sense of requests, request futures, uh, works with that. Soup sieve, I'm going to take a wild guess and say this is some sort of helper for beautiful soup. Uh, stim, I'm not sure off the top of my head. And then Tor request allows you to send requests through Tor, which we will also demonstrate uh, on how to do that. So I have already conducted the installation. Uh, it's just uh, pip three install switch r uh, requirements.txt dash dash user, just like that. Uh, I can actually hit it. You'll see everything has already been handled. Uh, and then we can go into the account. And one of the things that I did was ichmod plus x sherlock.py. Uh, if you don't do that, you're going to have to run it using Python, uh, like this, Python 3, switch m, Sherlock, dash dash help, and then you can see it there. But I don't want to have to do all of that typing, so instead we will just do Sherlock.py. Uh, 
and of course I can show dash dash help and help works. Now there's only one positional argument and that positional argument is going to be a username. Uh, so Sherlock.py space and then the username that you want to use. Some of the other interesting items that we're going to care about is going to be uh, potentially using verbose if we care about debugging information or we want to see metrics. Uh, the next one is going to be output if you want to be able to save this to a file so you can use switch O and then a file so you don't have to pipe. You could potentially pipe if you wanted to but we don't have to pipe. Um, you can also do folder output because this will accept multiple usernames at the same time. So you can create a, um, a JSON file and then you can run all of your items off of that JSON file. Uh, you can create a CSV file if you want to. Uh, you can also limit which sites you actually want to search. And um, you can also tell it to do things like no color. So uh, you could set it for no color and then you could pipe that into something else or into a script or something like that. It just removes uh, color terminal output. So um, one of the other things that's interesting is you can also do print all uh, to output all sites where the username was not found. That can be useful as well. Uh, if you want to be able to hand that off to another investigator, you can say, hey, look, these are all of the locations that I've already searched. Uh, go ahead and continue with whatever it is that you want to do from here. Uh, and it will also use proxies if you're interested in doing so. So the very first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start the Tor browser. And so we'll kick that off real quick. And then I'm going to uh, just essentially minimize that. And, <coughs> excuse me, we're gonna come here to Joey's World Tour. And I'm going to copy his username here. Now, if you notice, Joey's World Tour is not gonna come up as having a YouTube account because he hasn't gotten to the point yet where he has Joey's World Tour as the name of his channel. He's just using the default channel name. Uh, so we can come here and we can type Sherlock.py and then we can, oops, I accidentally copied that here. Uh, switch T. So we're going to use Tor, the, the switch T here. Uh, I can also spell it out if I'm interested in doing so. Let's say dash dash Tor. Uh, and the other thing that you can do is uh, use switch U for unique tour. If you're interested in using a unique tour circuit for every single request, uh, it just increases the amount of time. And you'll see as we run this, uh, it's going to take a little while. It's, it's not exactly super fast whenever running over tour, but we can see we're already getting hits right uh, we can see 500 px um, something i've noticed is almost all accounts come back as having a 500 px um, i think there's probably an issue here uh, nine gag comes back ask fm baidu uh, chess.com code academy uh, daily motion deviant art discus duolingo ebay uh, that's interesting Let's take a look at this eBay one real quick. So we'll dump that in there. Uh, based in the United Kingdom, Joey's World Tour has been an eBay member since 2016. I'm going to take a wild guess and say somebody registered this and it was not the actual person from Joey's World Tour, uh, Joey here. So we can also take a look and see uh, that somebody has created a GitHub. To the best of my knowledge, Joey from Joey's World Tour uh, does not code. So let's take a look and see what's going on here. Joey's World Tour doesn't have any public repositories. So again, it looks like somebody has most likely registered some of these accounts and uh, he is not using them. Uh, these are people who are potentially fans. Now he has 437,000 subscribers and so we can just see that lots of individuals could potentially be uh, looking at using his account. Uh, report of the week will be our next one. So I'm just going to close that out and we'll just type this, the report of the week. 
and we'll start running this. And he should come back, as you can see, with a YouTube. And it, there it goes. Off it is running. And again, he has a 500px. Uh, Ask FM doesn't seem weird to me because my understanding is is he runs some kind of radio station, so I wouldn't be surprised by that. And remember, we're doing everything here over Tor. So uh, since it is running over Tor, that can slow things down tremendously. And I may just turn off Tor here quickly. I think I'll do that just so that we can actually see what it's doing. So we'll just let it go. Uh, oh. <clears throat> it can take a little while for it to work as well. Uh, and of course, items are blocked. Um, things with your IP address, uh, you can end up in a situation where if you run this <coughs> too many times, it'll actually begin to not allow you to connect to certain accounts. Um, what I would recommend doing is set up your server, potentially Amazon AWS, right? Uh, get Sherlock installed, install Tor, either local to the box or make sure that you have a Tor server that you can always use for making connections to. And then uh, set up Sherlock to automatically use a brand new Tor circuit every single time and just create yourself a nice laundry list of all of the usernames that you want to search and have it run through that Tor circuit and just kick it off and just leave it. Um, it's going to potentially take quite a bit of time to finish. Uh, you can see I've been sitting here talking for quite a while and this thing is still uh, hitting items and probably timing out and there's a lot of activity that's going on in the background here but uh, we don't necessarily have to worry about that but what we do have to be worried about is are you going to burn your IP address uh, are you going to end up in a situation where they realize that you were doing things like um, visiting their web pages through automated methods stuff like that um, I'm actually going to just real quick we'll go to google.com real quick. Okay. So we can see the report of the week potentially has uh, a kick, uh, Pling, Patreon, Pokemon Showdown, Quora, Real Realm I, uh, Reddit, Roblox, Scratch, Steam, Steam ID. You see down here there's one that's for Tinder. Uh, but if we actually open it, you'll see that uh, it's another individual, some guy named Luke, who lists himself as an alcoholic at Weatherspoons, who is calling himself the report of the week. Uh, we can see his Twitch, uh, WordPress. He has a WordPress web page, which if I remember correctly, this one is actually his. And then as you can see down here, we have the YouTube. So we'll just real quick dump this in here. Yep, a journey in the world of review bra. Uh, potentially he had possibly started making this. This may have been made by somebody else. Uh, let's just see real quick. Yeah, all of these social media buttons are going to other pages and this doesn't even go to him. I would take a wild guess and say that the report of the week most likely did not um register that but some of them he did like this patreon you can see that is actually him so this is where he's asking for money per month uh, he's got his videos and he's got everything else here so we can very quickly locate information for people and of course it doesn't necessarily have to be for an investigation maybe you're just a fan of somebody right um you want to find out hey do they have a steam account do they have a uh, let's see what else is in here a kick or a uh, uh, 
Reddit or whatever, uh, if you're really interested in following somebody for whatever reason, this could be a really good tool to, to simplify that kind of search so that you can very quickly find somebody, locate them, <coughs> or figure out what it is that they're doing. So the last person that we're going to go through is uh, Luke Smith. And what's interesting is if you go to his videos, like this one, he just uses his name, right? So let's try uh, dash dash T this. I'm just going to try it as one. Uh, and we can see if we find anything. So if we type in Luke Smith with no space, we're already finding stuff, right? We got a BuzzFeed, we got a bodybuilding.com account. Um, we got an about me page. Let's see what this about me page says. Nothing in there yet. Okay. But it does follow. Oh, wow. That's a lot of accounts. We got Duolingo, eBay. Let's check out eBay here. Give it a shot, see what it does. Luke Smith, 503 uh, items for sale. Aeroflow performance valve. So, based in the United States, Luke has been a ABA member since November 29th, 1999. Uh, and then the other thing that you can do whenever you're investigating something like this, you can jump in there and you can just take a look at comments. And then if they're doing buying, what are they buying? Um, you can see maybe vintage stuff. Um, jump over here real quick. Uh, take a look at some stuff. Oakley flak jacket, ear socks and nose pads. Um, Rand P carriages. Uh, key to light, trailer axles, wheel cylinders, things like that. So that may actually be his eBay account. Uh, and the reason why I say that is because my understanding is, is he just bought it like a farm uh, and he could potentially be buying like old stuff and farming equipment. So uh, might be, uh, we see hacker news. He makes videos about computer hacking stuff and cyber stuff and whatever. Um, so again, this one might be him. Uh, submissions, any submissions, none, any comments, none, any favorites, none, uh, I have no idea what Osu is, all my links, Zihu, let's see what Zihu is, check that out real quick, so kind of Chinese webpage, Uh, nothing seems to be loading though, so I'll give it a few more seconds, but uh, no idea what that is. Uh, and then we Wattpad. Warrior Forum, uh, they're a pretty interesting web page. Uh, I actually know the guy who owns Warrior Forum, or at least I used to, unless it's changed hands or whatever. So this Luke Smith is completely different uh, on Wattpad, different guy. So this is probably enough uh, examples here. And the reason why I wanted to show all of this is because it gives you an opportunity to see that, yes, uh, sometimes it comes back with good information and sometimes it comes back with other people's information. So what you have to do is get as much data as you can, figure out what you're wanting to look for, and then put that together and then just kick it off, right? Um, this guy occasionally goes by review bra, especially his uh, fans. They will refer to him as that. So let's say that you were looking for people who are fans of him. Uh, you can look for accounts that use the term review bra because typically he uses the report of the week. But if you want to find accounts that have been made by somebody else, you can pivot to another name and then you can use that other name, right? Um, with that said, Sherlock is 
super easy to use. Uh, it is not difficult. It's very fast. Uh, I really, really like it. I think it's a great tool. And in addition to that, uh, if you're going to run it on Windows, I would recommend using the Linux subcell for Windows. Uh, don't You don't need to use uh, Windows itself. You don't have to use PowerShell or anything. Just install a copy of the subshell, uh, the Linux subsystem, and you're probably good to go for 99% of the tools. Uh, I don't typically recommend running this kind of stuff off of your local machine. I wouldn't do that. And the reason why I say that is because you don't want to burn your home IP address, right? Um, don't want to mess up, accidentally run a bunch of searches without using Tor, or potentially you can't use Tor, right? Some of these web pages are going to actually block Tor. And so they're going to come back and they're going to say, nope, this account doesn't exist. But really what they're saying is, is that you're using Tor. We're not going to tell you anything. So grab yourself an EC2 instance on Amazon AWS, and then you can run this. Uh, another thing that I would really recommend is if you are coming into this, uh, looking into open source intelligence to also give you an idea of how to protect yourself. Uh, one of the best ways for you to defend yourself is stop using the same account username everywhere, right? Um, I have my Retro 64 XYZ that I use for like business stuff, uh, for teaching, education. Um, it's, it's not a personal email address. I don't use it to, I don't like hand it out to friends and be like, hey, let's, you know, hit me up on Steam using this username or whatever. Uh, I just, that's not how that works. <sighs> Remember, and this is really important, like bring it in, nose right up against the glass. Stop cross-pollinating all of your accounts. And what I mean by that is, think about when the breach of Ashley Madison happened. Okay, so there's a company called Ashley Madison, and what they do is they sold affairs. So if you wanted to go sleep with somebody uh, who wasn't your spouse, you could jump on Ashley Madison and you could pay a little bit of money, and then they would let you make an account, and you got to hang out with the other, like, 50 million men who are on that webpage, all hunting for the, like, 27 women or whatever that used Ashley Madison at the time. Um, and then you would make these accounts and then hunt, I guess, whatever, whatever it is that you want to call it. But here's what really ended up happening. Uh, a bunch of people decided, you know what, this isn't for me, or I've changed my mind, or whatever. And so Ashley Madison said, well, if you want to delete your account, you have to send us money. And so a bunch of people sent money to Ashley Madison, and they didn't delete the account. But what these idiots did was they created accounts like uh, Pastor So-and-so at the thefirstchurchofthetruth.com. And so he would make his, he would take his church email and his church username of father so-and-so and then he would make an ashley madison account and say hey i'm looking to sleep with somebody that's not my wife or whatever and then um run that account for a while and then realize either a hey i'm messing up or b i'm an idiot or hey why did i use my church email or whatever and then paid a bunch of money and said okay go ahead and delete my account and of course ashley madison did not delete the accounts and so the next thing you know um you had individuals who were literally committing suicide uh, because they had realized that they had ruined their career their family their lives all of this stuff now i'm not telling you to protect yourself so that you can go out and do bad things or whatever i want you to think about it also as like a student okay think about yourself as you're a, a student a young man or a young woman who you have decided to jump on, I don't know, uh, Plenty of Fish, right? That's a dating web page. So you jump on Plenty of Fish or MySpace or whatever, and you're using the exact same email, account, username, everything for that account as you are for everything else. So let's say I'm a bad guy and I've decided I want to be a stalker. And I and I look at you and I say, oh, you're real pretty. You are you got big muscles and you're tall and uh, whatever. Uh, that's really pretty and that really hits all the buttons for me. So now I'm going to take your information. I'm going to throw it into Sherlock. I'm going to find all of your accounts. And then I'm going to figure out by the end of the day where you live, what you do, who you hang out with, where all your photos are hosted, who all your friends are. I'm going to have every bit of information that I possibly want about you. And then what am I going to do with that? Right? Probably not something good. 
probably not. It's probably not of benefit to you. So if you're an investigator and you need this information so you can track people down, uh, that your hint is people use the same account everywhere, right? Uh, now, it's entirely possible that off of all of these accounts here, uh, a whole bunch of them are not the same individual as we were searching for, but it's also possible that a lot of them are good. And then in addition to that, once you have all of this information, you can pick and choose through it, right? Um, if you're the bad guy or you're the investigator or whatever, you got nothing but time, right? Um, you only have to be right once. That's, that's the most important part. That's, you just got to find that one little piece of information that's going to going to help you and once you have that information you can oftentimes pivot from point to point to point until you can accomplish your mission and so my recommendation is learn how these tools work get them set up on your system figure out how you're going to set up your toolbox right again i recommend amazon ec2 instances they're cheap they're easy uh, you throw one up you get your code up there you get it running and then you're good to go and no matter where you are in the world as long as you have an ssh capability as long as you have the ability to ssh into a box you have a weaponized system that you can use for everything okay and at some point we'll go through that i'll show you how to set up a system we'll go from top to bottom set up the ec2 instance get it completely put together get all of the things that you need installed and i can show you how for on a very cheap budget you can have a really good open source intelligence investigation setup that's being run remotely so it never touches your infrastructure so that'll be one of our future videos with that said thank you for joining me as we talk about uh sherlock Thanks for taking a look at everything with me. We went over a little bit of how to use it with Tor. Uh, we got to look at some accounts here. We got to talk a little bit about the theory of open source intelligence and investigations. And of course, anytime you need anything, don't hesitate to let me know. Um, I'm planning on making a lot more videos for our use um, on YouTube. So follow me there. Uh, you know, like and subscribe, all that stuff. So thank you very much. Have a great time.